Africa, there was one happy kingdom. Malaga, its trees were huge, its animals so cool. There was one happy kingdom. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Stories from Magadalupsa. Magadalupsa was a kingdom that existed somewhere in Africa many years ago. Its most famous king was King Swigo Fancy and its favorite page boy was Shaba. My name is Alero. Today I will be telling you why children play with toys. Long, long ago, in the kingdom of Magadalupsa, during the reign of King Swigo Fancy, lived a very beautiful young woman known as Blen Buddha. She lived alone in a small house close to the home of the parents of Shaba, the king's favorite page boy. Blen Buddha was a teacher in the palace of King Swigo Fancy. She taught the young princes, princesses, page boys, and other young children who resided in the palace mathematics. Many young men from Magadha Lupsa and all the kingdoms had heard of her beauty and often came to ask for a hand in marriage. But Blen Buddha did not want to get married to anyone. She turned down every young man that came to ask for a hand in marriage. There was one man, however, who refused to give up. His name was Ipa Nosuku. Ipa Nusuku was a wealthy prince from a great kingdom located towards the north of Africa. He was very handsome and tall. He was strong and kind too. When he first heard about Blen Buddha, he traveled for several months on his horse, accompanied by three servants all the way to Magadha Lupsa. When he eventually saw Blen Buddha, he said to himself, she is the most beautiful woman I have ever set my eyes upon. I will do everything possible to make her my wife. Ipa Nusuku sent lots of gold and silver jewelry to Blen Buddha, but she rejected them all. He would wait on Blen Buddha while teaching the students in the palace. When she was done teaching, he would accompany her back home, telling her about his kingdom and how much he loved her. But Blen Buddha had no interest in the prince and his stories. Then one day, while paying a visit to his parents, Shaba received a visitor. It was Ipa Nusuku. My dear Shaba, I have come to you for help. I have never set my eyes on a woman as beautiful as teacher Blen Buddha. She is so lovely that any king would be proud to have her as his queen. I would like to have her as my wife. I plead with her every day, but she does not listen to me. She has no interest in me. I'm told she has no interest in getting married to anybody. She is my teacher. That's why I have come to you. Everyone I have spoken with says that you will be able to find a way to help me. Please help me. Shaba knew there was not much he could do. His teacher was an adult and he was just a child. How could a child recommend to an adult whom she should get married to? But Shaba felt very sorry for Ipa Nusuku. His clothes were tasteful and expensive and he had servants waiting on him. Yet, he looked so sad and pained. I will do whatever I can to help you. In school the next day, Shaba told his fellow page boys, princes and princesses about Ipa Nusuko. I've never seen a man look as unhappy as this prince. We must help him. Is he good looking? He's more handsome than any man I've ever seen. Then maybe he should send her gifts. He has sent her gifts of gold, silver, silk and lots of precious things but she always rejects them and says she's not interested maybe he is rude and unpleasant 
It's not enough to be rich and handsome. A decent woman does not only want a man to be kind and generous, he must also have good manners. Does he have strong muscles? A woman as beautiful as her teacher would want a man who can protect her. Is this prince strong enough to protect her? Prince Ipa Nasuko is well-mannered, I assure you. He's also very humble. If he weren't, he wouldn't come to see a 12-year-old boy like me at home. He's also strong and speaks several languages. In the following days, Shaba and his classmates thought hard about how best to tell their teacher about Ipa Nasuko. But as no one was able to come up with a serious plan, they gradually began to forget about the prince. One morning, while having a late breakfast, King Swigo Fancy heard a loud noise coming from the royal visitor's lounge. As the noise grew louder, he asked Shaba to go find out what was responsible. At the hallway, some people were laughing heartily, but others appeared slightly worried. The object of the confusion was the royal teacher, Blen Buddha. Blen Buddha had arrived a little early at the palace and decided to wait in the royal visitor's lounge for school to commence. It was while she was waiting that Lohimi the lion walked into the lounge. Blen Buddha looked up and saw the lion standing right beside her. Even though there were other visitors present, Blen Buddha was so scared of the lion that she almost fainted. She tried to scream but her mouth refused to make any sound. In fear, she fell to the ground breathing heavily. Lohimi, being the friendly lion that he was, didn't understand what was going on and attempted to assist the young woman. He went closer to her and tried to pull off her scarf, thinking that perhaps Blen Buddha was being choked by it. Unfortunately, seeing the lion so close to her made Blen Buddha even more scared. Her heart beat so hard that she feared it could fall off her chest at any time. Shaba quickly led Lohime away from the waiting chambers back to his cage while he sent for the royal nurse to take care of his teacher Blen Buddha who looked shaken and embarrassed. It was at this moment that an idea occurred to Shaba. The next day, he told his classmates his plan and they agreed to work together. They set out to build a model of Lohimi the lion. Every evening, whenever he was not attending to King Swigo Fancy, Shaba would be busy with his friends working on the model. First, they made a drawing of the lion. Then they got leather and trimmed it to the size of the drawing. Next, they sewed the edges of the leather together and stuffed it inside with sheep hair. The legs of the dummy lion were made of wood and covered up with leather as well. Then they asked Buati, the son of the greatest sculptor in Magadalupsa, to help to construct a bronze image of the face of the lion. Finally, the bronze lion head was affixed to the body of the dummy lion. It had been a lot of work, but the children were happy that at last they had made a dummy lion that looked like a real lion. One day, two of the children covered the dummy lion in a wrapper, and while Blen Buddha was teaching in the palace, they carried it to a house. Here, they carefully unwrapped the dummy lion and placed it in her bedroom. Later that evening, when Blen Buddha was done teaching at the palace, she set off for the market. She needed to buy a few food items to make supper. As he did every day, Prince Ipa Nosuko, who had waited outside of the palace for Blen Buddha to finish her work, walked his horse quietly behind her. By the time she finished from the market and got back home, it was getting dark. She got into her kitchen and began to prepare her supper. While the prince waited with his horse and one of his servants outside of her home, Blen Buddha did not as much as cast a glance in his direction. He's wasting his time. When he gets tired, he will go back to wherever he came from. Soon, the prince heard a loud scream from Blen Buddha as she scrambled out of her house. She shouted, running towards the prince. Oh, prince from the distant kingdom, save me! 
and she fell into the arms of the prince in fear. Ipan Nosuko tried to explain to her that a lion could not possibly be in her bedroom, but blamed Buddha had fainted. So with his servant, he carried her on his horse to the royal infirmary and arranged for her to be well taken care of. He stayed with her all day long as the nurses and doctors nursed Blame Buddha back to recovery. With time, Blame Buddha began to recover. Whenever she opened her eyes, she saw the prince waiting on her, smiling at her. She saw how happy he was to see her recovering. Blame Buddha soon fell in love with Ipa Nosuko. She agreed to marry him and together they traveled to his kingdom. Not long after, Ipa Nosuko's father, the king, died and Ipa Nosuko became king. Even though he was a very handsome king, it was his queen Blem Buddha who was the favorite of the people. So beautiful was she. A few weeks after Blem Buddha left Magadalupsa, some chiefs told King Sigur Fancy about the story that was making the rounds in the kingdom. Shaba, they said, had connived with a good-looking prince, Ipanusuku, to trick Blame Buddha into marrying him. King Swigo Fancy was angry and sad and disappointed as he listened to this story. Shaba, I am disappointed in you. Why play such a prank on your own teacher? You have a big punishment waiting for you. I am sorry, Your Majesty. We didn't mean any harm. We only wanted to help the kind prince. Your punishment is that each of you will go back home and make a small model of your brother or your sister. You can make the models from wood, from clay, or even bronze. You have six months to do this. Shaba and his friends worked so hard making clay, bronze, and wooden models of their siblings that they had blisters on their palms. But the models turned out to be very beautiful and even the king was excited to see them. The models became very popular with children in Magadalupsa too. Children loved to play with these models. Soon, many children were asking Shaba and his friends to make models of them and their siblings too. And before long, they had a name for the models. They called them toys. It didn't take long for adults to realize that since children love toys so much, they could make a profit from making toys and selling them to children. So adults too began to make toys. With time, children from other kingdoms got to know about the toys that were made in Magadalupsa and they loved them too. King Ipanusuko and his wife, Queen Blenbuda, even sent royal ambassadors to Magadalupsa to buy toys for the children in their kingdom. Before long, toys were being made in other kingdoms and children all over the world loved them. Shaba and his friends are the reason why till this day children love to play with toys. I hope you enjoyed the story of why children play with toys and if you did, don't forget to press the like button share and do subscribe so you will be notified whenever we have new episodes of stories from Agada Lupsa. Join me next time for another exciting episode of stories from Agada Lupsa. <laughs>